There we go. Yeah. Hi, this is Dave Train, and this is Lex TV, shedding and spreading light for the chiropractic students. We have chiropractor Dr. Peter Kovorkian calling from Boston, Massachusetts. Peter, welcome to Lex TV. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, so this is going to be fun. So thank you for kind of helping me pilot this new uh, live Lex TV. Uh, you know, if any viewers kind of pop in, you know, they're able to ask some questions. Um, but if not, I have plenty to ask you for sure. So no problem. <laughs> yeah. So so Peter, how did you get started in chiropractic? Well, it's an interesting story. I was uh, in engineering school, Tufts University Engineering School in Massachusetts. I loved engineering school and for a, a variety of reasons I started seeing a chiropractor in my freshman year. And shortly after starting engineering school, probably about oh, halfway through, as much as I loved math and science and I loved the whole science of engineering, I, um, I knew that it wasn't going to fulfill me. So I started uh, considering other careers mm -hmm. and uh, everything from teaching and psychology and, uh, and uh, um, uh, um, um, IT more IT things that were just starting computers were just coming into into vogue, uh, and I, every time I go to my chiropractor, I was intrigued by what he was doing, how I was feeling, and every time I asked him a question, he was a very philosophically grounded chiropractor. The answers that he gave me just made so much sense, and by the beginning of my sophomore year, I remember like it was yesterday, being on the table, and he's adjusting me, and. I got above the table and I said, how do you learn how to do this? And um, he started explaining it to me. At the end of my sophomore year that summer, I went to visit uh, colleges and I completed engineering school and then enrolled at Palmer College uh, six months after I graduated engineering school. Um, so that's a short story. Yeah, and, and what was it kind of like uh, attending Palmer? Um, well, <clears throat> I remember like it was yesterday, sitting in orientation class, the first day that you're in school, the day they collate you, the registrar comes, the financial aid, and, and all the various things to make sure that you, you know where everything is, with 168 other people. Wow. And um, during that day um, of, of being introduced to, to Palmer, somebody from the Philosophy and Communications Club comes and does a lay lecture. It was a 15, 20-minute talk. The basic story of chiropractic, uh, those 15 minutes changed my life uh, because it was the first time that I really heard the chiropractic story and I really understood uh, what the big idea of chiropractic was yeah. and I made a commitment to myself at that moment that I was going to learn how to do that. Yeah. I was going to learn how to give a lecture like that because I know that if, if my parents had heard the story that that person had just shared with me, that I would have had the benefit of chiropractic care from birth. Yeah. I didn't start seeing a chiropractor until I was in college, yeah. and uh, that that totally shaped my experience at Palmer practice and even what I do today. Yeah, you know, and that's you know that's huge. The first two stories that you even shared, an alley between both was you know this uh, great communication from the chiropractor to you, and then you know you kind of diving into chiropractic. You know, like, like you really never know who's watching or who's listening. Um, Especially whenever you're just, you know, so like some of these people kind of get wrapped up in the day-to-day -day stuff, but you never know who's watching and paying attention, and you know, a, a career is born, and and um, you know, I've heard some amazing things about you, <laughs> and uh, I pay people well. <laughs> so you know, so, you know, speaking of Palmer, I've 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 heard that only B.J. Palmer has contributed more than than you have to chiropractic. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I know that you have been running the. Um, one of the oldest, or if it's the oldest uh, chiropractic philosophy group going on 30 years every month at your place. So, yeah. yeah. The, I'll give you a bit of the story that's behind that. That's actually very interesting. Shortly after I graduated, my wife was also a chiropractor. Um, we had started practice together, mm -hmm. and we started having a, a little support group. You know, there were like uh, six, eight of us, couples, four couples, that would get together uh, every week or two, and we're Tell the stories about you know, what phone system should we buy or where do you get your tables, who services this, x-ray. And, and we realized that we all had our circles of friends. And we said, you know, let's start getting together. So this is back 1983, 84, somewhere around there. Uh, only in practice a couple of years. And we started 
coming together, just the, the few of us, and we said, well, let, let's start doing a monthly meeting. Mm -hmm. So we started doing potlucks, and we actually named our group the Cairo Group. Cairo stood for Chiropractic Health Information Resource Organization, C-H-I-R-O. I got gotcha. you. But what we would do is get together. We did uh, uh, mall events and, and health fairs and various things to get the message of chiropractic out and to help build and develop our practices. It was primarily a social thing. We mm -hmm. would do a potluck at somebody's home, and at the end, before we broke apart uh, to go our own ways, uh, there would be anywhere from you know, 20, 30, 40, 60 people at, at any given time. Uh, and before we go our separate ways, we'd all come together in a circle and start sharing what seminars were happening, what's happening in our lives, you know, alumni association, this or whatever, student recruitment events, whatever they were. And then we'd break apart. So that happened for oh, probably about two, three years. Uh, that group began to fizzle down just as I was fizzling down the leadership of that group then started to create uh, the quasi-political group. It was called the ICA of Massachusetts mm -hmm. at that time. And it moved from people's homes to a hotel. And once a month we would do a philosophy night. So that was the beginning of our philosophy nights. This is the late 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time, you know, Patty and I were having our kids. Uh, we realized that the practice we were in, we were outgrowing, so we were building our new home office where we are now. And somewhere around year 2000, no, 19, 2000, 1990, 1990-91, as we were finishing this house, we said, hey, we're losing money paying these hotels, three, four, five, six hundred dollars a month, and let's start doing the philosophy nights at our place. And we then shifted it from being an ICA group to being apolitical, and we named it the Mass Alliance for Chiropractic Philosophy. Yeah. So formerly the MACP has been existing since 1991, but its origins actually go back to like 1984, 85, somewhere around there as the Cairo group. And ever since 1991, we have been doing philosophy night programs every month here at our home office with speakers from all over the world. Um, oh, it, it's, it's awesome. And it's more than just a speaker. Uh, we start the program at 6 o'clock, the second Saturday of every month, the first half hour we do food, we feed people, uh, then we do an hour long sharing, a, a mentor or a mastermind program where somebody from my board shares something about practice and its practical application. Each year we mix it up, this year we, we're taking a principle, each person takes a principle, one of Stevenson's 33 principles, discusses it, uh, delves into it philosophically and then brings it into practical relevance in, in terms of its application in practice or patient education or, or personal growth in, in contemporary time. Then we take a short break and we have a, a guest speaker come. Uh, last month we have Dr. Steve Tullius from California. Yeah, so, uh, uh, the presidents of three colleges this past year. We have Adrian Wenban from Barcelona, Brian Kelly from New Zealand, and Ed, Edwin Cordero from uh, South Carolina from Sherman College, all speakers this past year. Um, next month we have uh, Stephanie Mage. So we get people from all over the country coming and, and speaking here. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then great. afterwards everybody comes back in the house and we uh, talk it down, you know, till 11, 12, midnight, one o'clock. That's great. Yeah, that's a, a a huge practice tip for the students running uh, local campus organizations. If you feed them, they will come. So always, yeah, always. <laughs> absolutely. Feed people. <laughs> But on, on, on the flip side of that, the more that you engage in community, exactly. find your tribe. So wherever you're going to go and practice, if you're in school, find your community there, your philosophy groups, your epoch groups, your, your pediatric groups, something, a technique, whatever, whatever draws you, find your tribe. That's your support system. You need it when you get into practice too. You know, and I'd like to say you can find it in your state society. Very often you can't. The drive of most state societies is political. You know, legislation, licensure, uh, insurance equality, public information, things of that sort. You really need a support group. I, I, nothing can build your practice, your headspace better than having your, your, your connection support group in your area. Right now, there are so many philosophy groups. There are epoch groups, core groups, Dead Chiropractic Society, Band of Brothers, uh, uh, core, uh, um, focus groups uh, all over the country. And so find it. And if there isn't one, create one. You know, yeah. we, we have so much of a need for that. Yeah, if you're just joining us now, we have Dr. Peter Kovorkian calling in from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, feel free to ask your questions below. Um, and it will appear up on magically on the screen thanks to Google. And, um, you know, you know, I just mentioned 
Sherman College. I know that you are heavily involved and you're very, very active with Sherman um, as the, I believe, the uh, chairman of the board of the trustees. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, what's that like being uh, being in uh, in that kind of seat? You know, it was never on my goals list to be on a board of <laughs> chiropractic school. Yeah. And one day I get asked by somebody, so would you consider serving on the board of Sherman? And almost uncontrollably from inside of me, just as the question gets asked, there was like this resonant sound, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then so you know, I go down to, to Sherman to my first, first board meeting, but this is my second board meeting, I realize I don't know anything about being on a board of trustees. <laughs> and so I started doing some reading and research and, and, and really getting the idea of what, what does being on a board of trustees really mean. And Sherman is going through its its changes, uh, you know, uh, presidency change, etc. Uh, so I start meeting with uh, people from the uh, Association of Governing Boards and and other people who are on boards of trustees, and I'm I'm realizing that most people who sit on boards have no idea what it is to be on a board of trustees, particularly a nonprofit yeah. arena. Um, so it it's been a real education for me to understand. Uh, the how to create a healthful relationship between uh, board of trustees, the governance body, and the institution, and it's it's been a great journey. It really has, and to, to see the influence that a board of trustees can make on an institution, uh, the importance of leadership. I mean, Dr. Cordero was, has been such a gift to the institution and to the profession. Uh, it was it was our job to to find a new president, and, and Dr. Gadir has done an extraordinary job in carrying forth the ideals and the vision of of the Sherman Board of Trustees uh, into actualization. In the in a couple of years, we've doubled our enrollment, doubled our uh, if not tripled our contribution to the school. Uh, it is uh, the the strongest game in time right now. I think it's the fastest yeah. growing university college in the world. So yeah. uh, we're very excited about that. You know, and and one of the uh, other organizations that you're involved with, which is the ICPA, is actually finally coming to Texas Chiropractic College. Uh, yes. Yeah, for the first time in a long time, so that's going to be great. I, I promised Jeannie Ohm that I would take her out to eat somewhere in Houston, because <laughs> I, I always like to post up those pictures. But yeah, it's, it's exciting. And then, um, why should uh, students uh, check out uh, the ICPA? Well, the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association was started a lot of years ago by Dr. Larry Webster. Uh, Dr. Webster was an instructor at Life University uh, many years ago and is known as the grandfather of pediatric care, of, of the care of children. And Larry began research with uh, the importance of care for kids as well as protocols for, for adjusting children. Uh, adjusting children is not just taking what we do to adults and putting it on a small spine. There's a whole different level of skill set that really needs to be developed to effectively and safely take care of children. Yeah. Uh, although all chiropractic colleges have some bit of, of understanding of very, very few of the colleges really teach uh, chiropractic care for kids. Most of what's taught is uh, apply the adult protocol to a small spine, which doesn't always work. Um, so the IC, I, I've been teaching for the ICPA for, oh my God, it's going to be a, a, at least 12 years right now. And the program has gone through incredible evolution. Uh, it started as just a postgraduate program for chiropractors. And, uh, under the leadership of Dr. Jeannie Ohm, who's our CEO, there is a whole research arm. Uh, Dr. Joel Alcantara, chiropractor, has actually published more research regarding chiropractic subluxation center chiropractic, vitalistically focused chiropractic, wellness-based chiropractic, more articles uh, regarding chiropractic care and subluxation focused chiropractic care in the last three years than all chiropractic institutions put together. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's working his butt off to really create a, a framework of, of validation, if you would, in that, in that arena. And then we have a third arm of public education of uh, providing information for the public and public awareness. Uh, and our uh, flagship uh, publication is Pathways Magazine, which yeah. most students, most schools, most offices know about. Our subscription is growing tremendously. Uh, outside of the private chiropractic profession, there's a, uh, a need and desire of Pathways Magazines in uh, alternative health circles, in uh, health food stores across the country. Mm -hmm. So our subscriptions are growing. It, it exists in many practices, most family practices throughout the world. It's available in multiple languages. 
So we're excited about that. Yeah. But still, the core of what ICPA offers is postgraduate training in family practice. Uh, there, it, it, through the program, there are a half a dozen different technical systems that people become aware of: Thompson, Logan, Gonset, Muscle Palpation, SOT, Cranial Work. So it's all that all within that the program that's there as well as supportive things to create a successful family practice. It's yeah. an awesome program. Students can do it starting their last year of school if they choose to. It is designed for, for docs uh, or, or uh, graduate level students. Yeah. You know, and like you made a note to say it's you know subluxation based research, you know, like wellness based research where I uh, you know sometimes I you know come across people where you know they think to themselves, well um, you know, like if you're just only focusing on analyzing the spine and adjusting, I mean, you're missing out a lot of different things, you know. And um, and I I heard a story from someone, you know, kind of where you shared with them uh, the miracle of an adjustment and why why it's so important for 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 chiropractors to stay focused in on on that and and where almost uh, every adjustment is is a a miracle. You know, it's um you know that you know, that reconnection to the body. Is, uh, can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, I remember the conversation. You're talking about Sean? <laughs> I, I'm not going to divert any names or anything. But, uh, Sean, uh, Sean, Sean. So, uh, I, I, we won't mention any names. <laughs> a friend of mine who is part of our group, our Mass, Mass Alliance group, uh, says to me, you know, I, I need to have more miracles in my practice. And, you know, I totally hear that. I mean, there, there is a a magic that happens when somebody who comes into our practice that has a a medical condition, you know, whether it be a musculoskeletal headache, back pain type of thing, or an organic issue, asthma, bedwetting, or or another issue of you know depression or 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 other pathological things, mm -hmm. and they come, they receive chiropractic care, and miraculously that problem, that issue, is gone. Yeah, and you know immediately we say, oh my goodness. Chiropractic is amazing. It's a miracle. And it's so easy to get hooked into that. Yeah. And so easy to, I mean, there are chiropractors today that, that believe that, you know, that you adjust the atlas and you're going to cure the world of all disease. Mm. Um, I mean, D.D. Palmer thought he found the cure for deafness when he gave the first adjustment. It's a miracle. In reality, that, that we don't do that at all. We don't treat a condition. It's life that does that. Mm. Life is the only healer that there is. Life is the reason why D.D. Palmer got his hearing back, or the person gets over cancer, or the headaches go away, and life expressing itself is a miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, we tend to focus on the miracles we can see. I, I tend to also look at the miracles that we don't see. Mm -hmm. How many people are there that we take care of? How many children are there that we take care of that don't develop tumors, that don't develop colitis, that don't develop pains and aches and problems that don't have the those conditions you with me the silent miracles yeah and I, I take it to the next step to say by having a nervous system free of vertebral subluxation that we aren't we aren't necessarily even dealing with that issue of problems but we're allowing the human physiology to adapt to the environment at its potential mm -hmm. to organize and reorganize itself to its maximum capability to bring an expression of the human potential to a place that's beyond our wildest dreams. So when we look at it, when we can specifically adjust someone and know that we contributed profoundly to their physiology by ensuring that the brain and the body are connected, we allow the miracle of life to express itself most fully. So I looked at Sean after he makes his comment, and I said, I want to slap him, and I said, every adjustment is a miracle. Yes. <laughs> every single adjustment is a miracle. And if in that process all you saw is the legs go even, or cervical syndrome go away, or muscles go into balance, or joint coming back, joint motion coming back, or joint play coming back, or the tone of the body being better, the respiration opening up, whatever your indicators are that show that there's been a favorable change of the physiology, you're watching the miracle of life better express itself in that being, mm -hmm. and who are we to judge what that body needs to do? Mm -hmm. It may need to get over a symptom or not. It may need to get over a condition or not. Who are we to judge that the pathology, that pathophysiology that we're witnessing there isn't exactly what that physiology needs? Yeah. And if that wasn't present, that something worse may be occurring in their lives. So it, it's not to live in a place of judgment other than to say we have an opportunity to render this amazing service to people to allow the miracle of life to fully express itself. Every adjustment is a miracle. 
Yes. And lastly... Did that answer your question? Yes, totally. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Totally. <laughs> I mean, I almost want to stop the broadcast right there and just like, leave it like that. <laughs> you know, let that just simmer. But, you know, I, like everyone should definitely rewatch that section of the, the video if you're not watching it uh, live right now. Yeah. Um, and lastly, what would be your greatest advice for a chiropractic student? Hmm. Um... <clears throat> Can I just one thing? Or can I say a bunch of things? <laughs> as many as you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in. What's my advice to a chiropractic student yes. wanting a successful chiropractic practice? Sure. All right. Okay. So first thing is fully embrace and understand the impact of vertebral subluxation and vertebral subluxation correction mm -hmm. on a person's physiology. Know how to deliver that with your hands. Know that you have the capability utilizing your knowledge or skill proficiently to evaluate somebody's physiology, determine how you can intervene to allow that physiology to be in a greater state of ease, a greater state of, of flexibility, a greater state of life expression by making sure there's no nerve interference, by correcting vertebral subluxation. So know that, know that inside, outside, mm -hmm. more than anything else. Secondly, know how to tell the story. Know how to explain the big idea of chiropractic in a non-therapeutic setting, in a, in a wellness-oriented mindset, in a miraculous way to allow people to embrace the passion. I said, I mentioned when I was in my first quarter orientation of Palmer College, those 15 minutes changed my life. Mm -hmm. And what I got in those 15 minutes is know how to tell the story. Be proficient in telling the story, handling the questions of chiropractors, handling the opposition of pe that, that, that chiropractors will get. Whatever that is, so that you own your ability to articulate the big idea. Yes. You tell the story and have the skill in your hands and your heart to be able to deliver that. You're going to have more people than you know to deal with. Immediately next to all of that is, and this isn't just for chiropractic students. This is for every student and every adult come into a place of totally embracing your heart. I believe that uh, we tend to live in our heads much of our lives and make decisions in our minds, in our heads in terms of, 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 of what we want, where we want to go, and we sometimes detach our heart from that. If you can fully connect to your heart, your degree of compassion, your degree of understanding, your degree of accepting people unconditionally and loving people unconditionally, you'll draw people into your circles like a magnet. So couple mm -hmm. that loving space with an incredible ability with your hands and the ability to tell the story and share your love and your passion with people. It's a magic formula. Wow. That is wonderful and great advice. Um, thank you, Dr. Peter Kevorkian, for sharing your light with us today. I will definitely uh, add some websites uh, linked in to the uh, show notes. So if you want to correct, uh, connect with Dr. Uh, Peter, I'll be there. Um, once again, I'll be doing more and more of these live Lux television uh, interviews and questions and answers. So be sure to add me to your contacts, like this YouTube channel. Um, be sure to share this with your friends, your classmates, and... Um, and we will see you soon. Uh, this was Lux TV, shedding and spreading light for the chiropractic students.